السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was chosen by Allah We heard that he was the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets The final of all the messengers and prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for him a path that was considered a path that we would actually be able to learn lesson from and we would be able to emulate and follow. And if we were to look at the issue of hardship and difficulty, something amazing that we are taught by the beautiful lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Inna Allaha idha ahabba abda nibtalah. Indeed, when Allah loves a slave or a worshipper of his, he tests him. Testing meaning difficulty and hardship comes in your life, not because he's punishing you, but he is examining you, testing you, giving you opportunity to pass with flying colors such that you can earn paradise. And you would have an elevation of status in paradise if you had become a person who was forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the ranks in paradise also differ. Those who have been through and endured much more and they have been patient and praised Allah and continued to have hope in Allah, calling out to Allah and they died in that condition. Allah will definitely give them a status that is very, very high, much more elevated than others because of the calamity and the difficulty that they were chosen to go through. So take difficulty and hardship in your stride. Here is another narration that the Prophet ﷺ mentions. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, عظم الأجر مع عظم الابتلاء The greatness of reward is connected to the greatness of the test. The greater the test, the more the reward. Which means, when Allah has made you go through huge tests, great challenges, a lot of hardship, for as long as that is drawing you close to Allah and you are becoming closer to Allah, you have become a better person. That was never a punishment, but rather it was rewarding. It's something that Allah will grant you favor in lieu of. My brothers and sisters don't think that every difficulty and every hardship is actually a punishment from Allah. It is not. Those difficulties and hardships that come about where a person becomes distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person starts questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are the ones that may be a punishment. But where you are becoming closer to Allah, it brought you to your knees in repentance, it made you a person who became more conscious of your maker, that was indeed a gift of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went through a lot of hardship. In fact, there was difficulty that started in his path even prior to his birth. Though he was the greatest of creation, the most noble of all prophets, his birth was by far one of the biggest gifts that we as his ummah have been blessed with. Subhanallah. So here goes. When his mother was expecting him, his father passed away. So his father, who was known as Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, this man passed away when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not yet born. Wasn't that a difficulty? One might say that was a very big challenge. Indeed, it was challenging. Indeed, it was very challenging. But it goes to show that if you were born an orphan or if you've lost your father at some point, perhaps there is a greater chance that Allah loves you more. He's giving you an opportunity to, sh to rise and shine, to excel, and he is actually in love with you more than others. He's giving you that chance. So don't become despondent. Understand, if you've lost a parent, well, someone better than you, the best, actually lost his father as well. And then when he was born, subhanAllah, some time later, a lot of incidents happened when he was little and he went to Halima to Saadiya in Badiya to Bani Saad, which was a place uh, in the rural 
lands. And there, there was an incident that occurred that made Halima as Saadiyah bring him back to his mum. There was a point where his mother passed away. He was only six years old. Imagine at the age of six, you lose your mother and you have not had a father alive from the point of your birth. That would mean you don't have any parents. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Yet he was the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets. Allah was preparing him in order to convey this beautiful message to us. This preparation came in a unique way. Difficulty upon difficulty. It is not easy to lose both your parents. For those of you out there who've lost a parent or both, be patient. Allah will give you the reward. Perhaps Allah has chosen you above others and Allah will grant you something in return that others may not have. When Allah takes one thing away from you, He gives you something else. But it's up to you to recognize what Allah has given you. And it's up to you to understand we're all going to pass away at some point, be it now or after 50 years. Whenever it may be, we all have to return to Allah. And the day we return to Allah, if we were true believers, would be our best day ever. May Allah make it that way. Amen. My brothers and sisters, then the Prophet ﷺ was taken care of by his grandfather. And some time later, not even a few years later, a couple of years later, his grandfather passed away. So every time someone took care of him, some years later, they passed away. You have the father who was already deceased, predeceased the Prophet ﷺ's birth. Then you have the mother who passed away when he was six. Then you have his grandfather who passed away when he was eight. And subhanallah, a young boy losing those around him whom he loved the most at that particular time. And subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, imagine the hardship and the difficulty. Not once did he complain. He took it in his stride. Allah strengthens a person. Allah strengthens a person. And remember one thing, if you'd like strength and comfort, we are taught something amazing. الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب Those who believe achieve the comfort of the heart through the remembrance of Allah for indeed it is only the remembrance of Allah through which the hearts achieve comfort. Amazing verse. Amazing verse. Remember Allah a lot. Praise Allah. Glory be to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Allah is the greatest. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. There is no might. There is no power except that of Almighty Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us beauty. Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Wa la ilaha illallah. Wallahu akbar. Wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Al-Ali. Al-Azim. That is Allah. The highest of all. The greatest, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us going through hardship. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thereafter was known as a sadiq al amin He was known as the truthful one, the honest one, the trustworthy one, subhanallah, among the people. That was an amazing characteristic. And then when he came forth with the prophethood, people belied him. They, they said, He's a liar and he is not being honest and he's a sorcerer and a magician. They laid every accusation they could against him. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept him calm and he was very calm. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He knew he had a task. He knew he was upright and honest and he kept giving the message in a beautiful way. They tried to harm him, they tried to assassinate him, they tried so many things and they failed. Allah has granted him a special protection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him. Wallahu ya'asimuka nas. Allah will protect you from the people. Subhanallah. When that verse was revealed, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was even more calm. Not to say he wasn't calm before that, but Subhanallah, that was the protection of Allah. He went through hardship in that 
the people began to harm the Muslims. They actually surrounded them in Shi'ab Abi Talib for almost three years and they didn't give them any food or drink. They usurped their wealth. They punished some of them. This type of hardship actually strengthened their faith. The people who accepted Islam in Mecca initially when they were being persecuted were the ones who were convinced by the message of Islam such that it was unshakable. Not at all. There was no one who quit Islam at that stage, yet it was the most difficult stage in the history of Islam. The Meccan period before the Hijrah was the most difficult time for the Muslims. Never has the Muslims or have the Muslims seen a time more difficult than that Meccan period right at the beginning. Yet Allah told him and told them to bear patience. Allah told them, your day will come. Allah will take care of these people. And guess what? A lot of them, Allah had written guidance for them, but later on. So sometimes a person shows enmity for a few years. Sometimes that enmity is extreme. And at times after that, they make amends. And they come in such a beautiful way that they become the torch bearers of the same truth that they were rebelling against. That is the beauty of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, عسى الله أن يجعل بينكم وبين الذين عاديتم منهم مودة والله قدير والله غفور رحيم سورة الممتحنة الله says Allah is able to create love between you and the one whom you don't like at all the your enemies Allah is all able and all capable Subhanallah. Perhaps Allah may create that love and it was created in the case of so many of the companions who before accepting Islam were enemies. They created hardship for the messenger and those who were around him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah be pleased with all of them. And yet later on they accepted Islam and they became champions of the deen. That was the plan of Allah. So after every hardship there will be ease. It's just a matter of time. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Indeed with every, indeed with difficulty, there is ease. And with the same difficulty, there is another point of ease. So two points of ease with the same hardship. That's one of the translations of these beautiful verses of Surah Al-Sharh. So my brothers and sisters, don't lose hope. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions were persecuted beyond a certain level. He instructed by the will of Allah, his companions to migrate to Medina to Munawwara. Some of them had already migrated to Abyssinia or Habasha in Africa. And the others were told to migrate to Medina. It was becoming unbearable. Imagine the hardship was such that they had to leave their homes, their belongings. They had to leave their birthplace. How many of us have struggled to that point? A small number, but may Allah make it easy. If you have struggled to that point where you've had to leave your birthplace, your country, your, and sometimes your belongings and so much more, then you need to know Allah is giving you a chance to worship Him with goodness and to thank Him for where you are right now and to be able to appreciate it by becoming closer to Allah and not distant from Allah. When the companions arrived in Medina Munawwara and when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, arrived in Medina Munawwara with all that hardship and difficulty, the first thing he did was to build a masjid, Masjid Quba. When we have been driven out of our homes and cities and countries perhaps, and we've arrived at other places, the first concern we should be having is, how are we going to worship Allah? We need to be steadfast. We need to create an environment for the community be consistent in the sense that don't forsake Allah just because you're now in a comfort zone, but worship Him even more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Think about others. Don't be selfish. Be compassionate. Think about others. Bring them together. Always have the community in mind, even if they don't appreciate it. You're doing for the sake of Allah. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, built a masjid in Quba. And he spent a few 
days there, after which he arrived in Medina Munawwara again, one of the first things he did was to put up the house of Allah. So for him, it was more important to put up a place of worship where they would worship Allah and thank Allah than to put up his own home or than to set himself up. Many of us probably would set ourselves up before we showed any concern for the community or for the house of Allah. Yes, we may not have such communities or we may be going into communities where there's already a masjid. Well, worship Allah and thank him and be there for society and community even if they are not so receptive at times. You be your charming self, you be your loving, kind, selfless self. But remember, don't let the evil of others change you to a worse person. Rather, it should modify you to an even better person. The Prophet Muhammad Wasallam shone in a way that he outshone everyone else, subhanAllah. During times of difficulty and hardship, he was in the front, helping, assisting. When they were digging the trench around Medina Munawwara, he was one of them who was digging. When people had tied one, one stone on their bellies out of hunger, he had tied more than one, subhanAllah. He worked hard. He served the people. He served Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he made sure that he delivered the goods. So the difficulty he faced when he arrived in Medina Munawwara, the hypocrites that were around, he always made sure that he was clear in his teachings, in his ways. He had the best wisdom. He was tactful. He used methodology that was very attractive at that particular time. It was the most attractive way of speaking. His words, how he carefully chose them, he never swore. And so many characteristics, I'm sure we've heard of so much of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if we look, my brothers and sisters, immediately after that, the people of Mecca decided we're not going to leave these Muslims alone. We're going to follow them even to Medina. And they arrived. They arrived the outskirts of Medina Munawwara. Subhanallah. The first battle was the Battle of Badr. Just to put it into context, because of all the property and wealth that was usurped in Mecca, the people of Mecca used that wealth to go to Abyssinia in order, sorry, to go to Asham, which was Syria, in order to actually, or the Syrian peninsula, to bring uh, caravans with merchandise in order to trade with that. But the money wasn't theirs. It belonged to the Muslims. So Allah allowed the Muslims to go and waylay that caravan, which was headed by Abu Sufyan. 313 Muslims who were not really armed well. They didn't plan a war. They simply wanted to intercept the caravan and take back their own belongings. Allah had a plan that made them arrive in the place known as Badr and there was a war that took place there and the Muslims won with very little numbers. And yet the, the uh, people of Quraysh were in bigger numbers and they were well armed. But Allah allowed the Muslims to defeat them. That was victory. It was difficult, hardship, but Allah gave victory. And then there came the battle of Uhud, which was the next major battle where the people of Quraysh had come now to Medina Munawwara and the outskirts, they battled in a place known as Uhud, which is just in the outskirts of Medina Munawwara. And that was a difficulty. It was a hardship. Imagine dealing with so many issues all around. And then there was the battle of the trench. And subhanAllah, then there was uh, the treaty of Hudaybiyah. They didn't allow the Muslims to make the Umrah that they wanted, the minor pilgrimage that they wanted, and they sent them back. And then Allah gave the Muslims a time and a chance to spread this religion far and wide. So the difficulty of being stopped from doing Umrah or Hajj actually came with a silver lining. What was that? Allah gave the Muslims an opportunity to expand. So if you have a difficulty where you're boycotted, you need to know it will always come with a silver lining. Allah will give you opportunity to expand. For as long as you don't have the self-pity and you actually stand and go ahead, press ahead, do whatever you can, keep moving as they say, don't stop. And you know, if you were to just think of how bad the situation is, you might become depressed. Don't do that. Learn from the example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He used to say, 
Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. All praise is due to Allah upon all conditions. For as long as Allah is pleased with you, there is nothing that is difficult. So the boycott came, subhanallah. They didn't allow people to engage in the pilgrimage. If you, for some reason, are not allowed to go somewhere for whatever it may be, consider it a gift of Allah. If you've been denied a visa or if you've been denied entry somewhere or you've been denied something that you felt was your right. Remember, it will always come with silver lining, a silver lining if you are going to take it in your stride and understand, try and understand, Allah definitely has a, a bigger picture. There is a bigger picture and we may not know it right now, but understand and trust Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from his mercy. Thereafter, the Prophet sallallahu went through so much. In fact, I haven't even spoken about Ta'if, hoping that someone may have covered the topic. We probably have heard about what happened when he lost his wife, when he lost his, uh, when the uncle who was taking care of him, when he went to Ta'if and whatever happened there, with every hardship came so much of ease thereafter. Until a day came when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had fulfilled his duty unto Allah by conveying the message very clearly. And he did the farewell pilgrimage. They marched through into what was known as the victory of Mecca prior to the farewell pilgrimage. And you know what? It was an amazing day. After all that hardship, the ultimate victory belonged to the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the believers. So after difficulty and hardship, for as long as we are steadfast and for as long as we learn from that beautiful example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we will always be victorious at the end. But some people are impatient and that impatience leads them to do things that would result in their downfall and then they won't see the victory. So keep following the sunnah, the example of the Prophet ﷺ. If you think you've been through hardship, let me tell you, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been through much more than any one of us. He lost all his children in his lifetime besides one. The boys in their infancy and childhood, the girls when they were adults, every single one of them, he lost them. They passed away in his life besides one who passed away a little bit later. That was Fatima radiallahu anha. So these difficulties, this hardship, that the best of creation endured with a smile on his face, showing gratitude and thanks to Allah is a big lesson for all of us. The hardship I go through, Allah alone knows. Your smile should actually cover that hardship. You need to understand there is a lot of goodness. Things could have been much worse than they are. Others have it worse than you and I, but things could have been worse. Allah is still there. We are still okay. We will continue to pray, continue to try, continue to do whatever needs to be done in the most beautiful way, such that not only do we benefit, but even those who are just onlookers would actually benefit from just watching. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us rightly guided. May we be from among those who learn a beautiful lesson when it comes to the life of the one who was sent as a mercy to mankind. Look at the mercy, even in hardship. It was great mercy. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.